Hello world. So welcome back or welcome. We are now on the devlog session number eight. And today I want to work on this point, the implementation of uh, uh, some kind of mechanism to be able to pass data between threads in Lua QT. I have already implemented this part offline. So we now have this um, Lua thread, uh, which can be used to start a thread. In theory, I have not really tested this yet, so we'll check that later. So you can start, stop, check uh, if uh, you should really stop processing, if it's running, and you can get an ID, which is always increasing number, which is probably nice to have. Um, Internally, this is going to mostly perform this operation. You get a state. You just set in the state what is the current thread that you're using, and then you start running um, the function um, to be implemented, in fact. And in fact, you don't really need to push the thread here because you already have the ID and in the Lua manager, we have this, um, this is actually the entry point you would use to start a thread. The start a thread would be done here. This would check in the list of existing thread if any of them is, well, either stop not doing anything. And if it is the case that it will just use that again, uh, it's not making a big deal because it's actually restarting a thread. Um, internally, when you do start, where was that? Yeah, when you do start, you just create a new thread. So that's not really like reusing it. Um, but still, when you do the run, you already have the this ID on the state itself. So you don't need to push that again. All you need to do then is probably just to run uh, the script function. And that script should be responsible for checking if this thread was request to stop or if you should stop anyway or whatever. Which means that basically all we really need to do here is maybe um, chk Just check that the stage is valid, and then we can just request the execution of the script. Oops. Oh, that will be the script that we provided uh, as content. And the chunk name should be... That's an interesting one. Let's say chunk name, and we're going to provide that as a string. Um, we we'll probably want to uh, get both the state name and the thread ID. So let's say thread. And we have, I think we have in format somewhere. Or format string. Okay, we still have that. This is the case where you need probably to call this format string. Uh, that would be thread, thread ID. Oh, you get the number. Um, then you have the um, state name. And then you have the entry, entry point. And we should put an at get this as a file name. It doesn't really make sense, but well, that's the convention we've been using so far everywhere else. So you would provide the thread ID, which is just this number, and then the state 
uh, get name should work. Uh, what is get name returning? A string. So maybe you need the um, draw content. All right. So with that, you have a chunk name and you could just use that. Why are you not happy? Can be made const. Mm, yeah. No, you can't fix that. Okay, let's fix it ourselves. So const and run. Let's make this const. So now you're happy. And um, so this is the execution of the um, script content with this Lua state in this thread. Uh, I should st still build. And while it's building, let's just check that. I should not push things like that before it's building correctly, but yeah. Um, what should I do next? Uh, yeah, concerning this message passing thing, actually I already have some kind of reference for that. Uh, I think, is it here? Or maybe it's not here. Um, I think I have that. Uh, for my crypto view project I, uh, directly in Python. Mm, no, that's not where it, it would be. I guess no, it's where it should be. Crypto view, yeah, that's it. Um, no, maybe not in there, maybe in Qui, yeah, Q task manager, that's it. So, what is this thing doing? I remember when I was working on that, I was not really sure how to deal with this. So you can have tasks which are Q runnable. And then this queue task manager. The nice thing with this queue task manager was you could add a task with a function and that could run this task and just notify you when it's done. Um, thing is, I have standalone threads now. I'm providing myself with those little threads. Uh, this does not depend on Qt or anything, but I would still like to, to be able to connect that with Qt somehow. Um, okay, so give me a moment, I try to think about it, assess and figure out what I can uh, do next. Okay, so I've actually been looking for alternate options and I think now, uh, starting to have an idea. Um, first thing we would need is some kind of worker object. I mean, Qt worker object that would be used on the Lua thread itself. So let's see. Uh, that would be added directly in the bindings, I believe. So we go into sources, Lua bindings for Qt. Um, Okay, so I was starting to use this folder, but I think in, now I should rather uh, start putting everything in a dedicated folder here, which would be new folder nerve. I have support for that now. I'm not sure where I started to use this. Now. 
I'm not going to find it this way. But I'm pretty sure that, yeah, we can do it this way. So it means that, for instance, this Q Lua connector, this is binded already, right? Or maybe not. It's not. No, it's not. Mm hmm. But anyway, we should be able to take this and move it into Earth. And same thing here, we should have the sources here. We take this and we move it here. And now, uh, what should we say? Let's just pause an arrow. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, not found with angle. Use quote. Why would not would you not find that with angle? Ah, ah, yeah, I know. That's because I'm specifying myself. Uh, yeah, the include folder. So we need to also mention that nerve is an include folder here. Now, next, we need to generate the bindings. Um, to force updating the uh, <clears throat> the CMake uh, input folders. So this will update us, and we now have this nerve indication. So if we go back there, it should find it now with the angle like that. Uh, yeah, I've seen that. So nerve Q Lua connector is binded. So now we need something similar. That would be um, Q Lua worker. And uh, Q Lua worker CPP. So this one is going to be a simple object as before. Uh, and this is taking a... <clears throat> uh, let's be careful about that. This worker object, we're going to create it on the... Um, On the main thread yeah we need to have it available on the main thread because we um, we want to be able to connect <clears throat> the signals that would be um, executed from this to uh, slots that are on the main thread Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you can't really provide a function like this what you can provide instead is uh, a script function that you oh not even wait a second because then you could invoke a method on that object uh, once it's uh, placed on the alternate thread and that should execute the method on the object itself so I don't think you need to provide anything here yet 
Whew. Um, what about slot and signals? So we have this. I don't quite remember all the, all this. Um, that's the yeah, the very degree uh, library which allow you to build signals and slot for Qt without actually using the mock. So I don't want to go with that. Uh, a signal, okay. You would do something like that. If that's really needed. So the signal would be um, Uh, what would be the signal send message? We would um, use a string by default, so let's do that for a test at least. And that would be message. And we don't have any protected, um, I mean, we don't have this one at least. What else do we have? We should have... Invoke method. Hmm. I'm not sure we would have invoke method available. Let me just check. Okay, so I'm not quite sure actually what, uh, if this is supported, there is this invoke method thing, but um, we'll, we'll just check actually if it's working or not. So let's start with a simple implementation that would be um, something like um, uh, run task. And you should provide the task that you want to run as a string. So that would be Q string to stay consistent. Um, and that would be a script then. And now this makes me think when, when you're going to run this, you probably want to have the Lua state to run the task on. I mean, to run the worker with. Um, <clears throat> So you should provide a state here, and it means you should also include that. Include, please. And that would be in uh, Nerve. If you have this, uh, do you want to... Oh, well, I guess you could also just bypass this part in the interface itself. You could just provide the state name. Sounds acceptable since um, since you can retrieve the state then from the um, Lua manager when you do the run task. Uh, all right, so 
thing is you uh, I would like to be able to call this function from the main thread to execute it on the well secondary thread and I think that to do that I need uh, I need this invoke method support and I don't know how you could have this available if you don't use this mechanism at all so probably I need to set this as a signal and um, you should pass the string okay the oops what is this slot and all we don't really have a need for this part yet okay so that's the basic uh, q lua worker now uh, it's going to take the state name and that's all you can just send a message from the run task i guess and that's it uh let's um back to this part now so this is where you do the implementation the constructor is taking a string that would be state name and this is what you use to initialize the state name and then you have the um, the two function that needs to be implemented What do you do for implementation of signals? Oh, there is this emit thing? No, that's that's not in the signal itself. Um, <laughs> I have no idea actually. Oh. Mm, that's already an implementation. Oh, come on. Uh, which mean that if you go back there. This run task here. You can't make it a signal. <sighs> Come on. Let me see. Okay, I think I found something that is worth trying now. In fact, we have that also on the uh, page where you have the degree uh, define. Uh, that's, where is it? Invocable. Normally, this is how you would do it, invocable. And now we just need to Add this function and uh, add this at the end. I mean, just after it with a semicolon. So let's try to do it this way. 
So we go back in the Lua worker here, the run task. So this is rather a W invocable called run task and we don't care about Um, oh yeah, semicolon is needed. All right, um, which means I can still so for send message I can't really provide the implementation, but that makes sense. I don't want to uh, yet for the run uh, task here I can provide something. And what should I provide? Um, I have the state name. So with the state name, what should I do? I could go and execute something, but before we try that, it's maybe a better idea to just bypass this and try to emit the event directly. But I would need to know on which thread I am. Um, how could I figure this out? Can I get um, an ID from a Q thread? Let me see. Okay, you know what? Let's provide a function right um, in the utils. In fact, I will also bind that into Lua eventually. Um, if we go there, sources, base, utils. Do we have something like um, get red? Oh, get red ID string. Mm. I rather add something different in my like and I would be using the ash function so ash function is going to return an int value With the ash. Well, no, it's not part of it. Actually, it's outside. So, with the ash. <laughs> I guess that's yeah never mind we'll see let's consider it just a simple integer I get current uh, so that would be returning an integer
And what we need to do is uh, get current thread ID. You don't really need to do that here. You would need to retrieve it. Um, mm -hmm. So you would uh, create your ash for this and call it with this thread get ID. And sign it long, long. To sign it type end. Okay, so that would be what I was looking for and sign it long long. So that's um either uh, U64 and this is what you would return. Come on. Okay, get current thread. ID and that is something that you could bind in um, in Lua so we could provide that right in here so that will be in the nerve package they should work get current thread ID so it means that now if you go into this um, Do a worker, but no, I'm on the CPP file. In there, you could get the ID. So, and display this uh, log debug. All right, and then you will need to emit your event. Uh, how do you emit an event then with this degree layer? Let's see. No idea. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. So again, let me find out. Um, so far, I could not find anything concerning how you emit the signal. So I think you actually just can call this signal and that's all. Emit should do just nothing. It's it's defined to be nothing anyway. Um, when you go into the definition here, so could be that there is really nothing to do. And you just call it, and since this function is a bit special, it's going to trigger whatever needs to be triggered. So let's see if we can do that, and we can just admit. Uh, let's prepare a message back, actually. So we'll do in the reply. Oh, that's going to be. Um, format string what oh Really? Come on. Do S and D string. Okay, let's do that. And oh yeah, probably I need to convert this again. 
right and then you need to emit you so you would just use send message and you would send your reply as this Okay, let me think a um, second. So first thing we should do now is try to compile that. We have removed that file anyway, but it's still available. Uh, it's just that we're probably not providing the binding for this yet. But for the Q Lua worker, we're going to provide the bindings. You have a state name, Q, okay. Could we instead provide uh, the state itself, state object? Mm. Not sure that's a very good idea. Because, yeah, that would keep track of your state as long as this object is alive and... That normally makes sense, but... Yeah, I prefer not to do it for now. Anyway, compilation seems to be going fine, so we'll make a comment with that, and then we have to generate the bindings for this object, so that we can create that um, directly in Dura. So, queue uh, Dura worker. All right. Now let's add the bindings. I would be in uh, QT here and we need to go in there and specify that we want to also bind the Q worker. And now uh, in the inputs, we should indicate that we should uh, include here your Q Lua worker input file. So what do you think about that? Ah, no, you don't want this. So let's uh, specify that you only want really to do a worker, nothing more. <clears throat> but this one, yeah, that's pretty good. What do we have? What are these static bindings? Mm -hmm. Yeah, never mind. We can run the task. There is a send message, which is actually a signal. TR, we don't care. Uh, Metacast, not sure what this is. Mm-hmm, okay. 
not sure you really want to do with it, but never mind. Alright, so we have the binding now for QDRA worker. Let's uh, check the computation. And uh, another thing we need also is definitely this Q thread. Oh, one error? What do you mean one error? Redefinition, of course. Uh, um, uh, Q Uh-huh. No member name this. I have no idea where this is coming from. Uh, but yeah, I guess we should ignore anything like that. Any function with this. So ignored function. Oh, it's not a function, it's a field. Um, interesting. Can I ignore fields? Whoops. Not really. I should probably introduce a generic mechanism for that, but for now, let's just do it here then. Um... Oh, we don't need the full name, we just need the name of it. Mm -hmm. So that, actually you should not put that here, it's not really a function. And so if it starts with that, then uh, you mm 
you ignore this entity i'm not sure this would work is that ignored uh, to and you stop otherwise if it's still a name space you can continue uh that should work sure come on a nearby you ready Right, so do we still have this? Mm, apparently not. So now let's try the build again. One day I should find a way to get rid of those uh, deprecation warnings. Is top level where is this and actually let's let's have a look. <laughs> uh Q widget is top level is deprecated. Use is window. Okay. Uh is top level is deprecated. But I guess we also have uh is window. Yes. So we can ignore this is top level from Q widget. And uh, that would be in there. So, Is there anything else? Yeah, probably, but that's the only one uh, I'm seeing currently. What? Oh, no, yeah. What did I change? Yeah, this one was changed. No, yes. So, yeah, all good this time. So, we have uh, so generated bindings for the Q worker. All right. And as I said, the next thing we need is this Q thread. Hmm. Um. Where do we get this from? That's from the core package and we have Q threads to include. Okay. Uh, so we need to then go back to the bind context and from the core we should include the Q thread point H probably. Nope. Yeah, this one exists. Mm, yes. <laughs> Simple ash, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's interesting. Not sure why this change. Uh, we have a couple of new functions in Q object here. 
which are what? Oh, basically to get the thread. I think we should have also yeah move move to thread. Yes, that's good. So we have this base function. Mm, what else is this? All right. Data and private doesn't really matter. And uh, Okay, let's see if the computation is working so fine. And now we have a few additional um, deprecation warnings. So let's uh, do some cleanup. Legacy wait from font viewpoint info. Let's take this one. Why constructor? Mm. Nope, we don't seem to have human metrics. Is that because I'm ignoring this? I'm not sure. So not sure where this is coming from, so we'll keep it for now. Set legacy wait from Q font. Okay. Font change from the we application. Use and all queue event application font change. Mm. Okay, not sure I want to get rid of this one. But well, yeah, that's deprecated. So let's let's get rid of it. So, QGUI application. So yeah, this recording is becoming a bit long, so let me just finish that cleanup and resume afterwards. Okay, so I'm done with uh, generating the binding, so now we can get back into this uh, crypto view program, and we are starting to build what we need to set up this um, worker thread. So first we need a thread, of course, and then we need to create the Lua worker, and this Lua worker should take uh, the name of the state where um, all the action should be executed, all the task should be executed. And yeah, I'm, I feel a bit unsure about uh, passing the name instead of the Lua state object itself. So let me just reconsider this point. Okay, so I think I'm 
that should really make this a little bit different. The thing is, when you have a lure thread, no, that's not where you have it. It's when you have a lure worker, uh, you're going to call this run task. It's an invocable. Mm -hmm. So you need to pass the arguments. Um, yeah, it would be tricky actually to provide the state at this level. But really, we don't need to specify that here. You could rather, when you trigger uh, the run of the task, you should provide that as an argument, which means you don't need to store this. And so if you now go to the impl implementation of this, uh, the constructor should not takes a name anymore, there will be no name here, not going to call this. And when you run the task, you get this state name. Um, mm -hmm. We could display this name here. And what we're going to do is, uh, at this point, when it comes to, well, executing the task. Uh, before we execute the task, we get a ref pointer on that state. And when we're done, we're going to release this pointer. So you keep uh, this uh, state referenced as long as you need it to perform the task. And when you're done, you just release your reference. <laughs> So I think this kind of make a bit more sense. So I have updated the bindings, so I need to regenerate them. I mean, updated the class, so I need to regenerate the bindings. And next, uh, so we get a worker here, and what should we do? We should move the worker to that thread. Move to thread. This thread, oh, that uh, should be this way. All right. And then we are currently on the main thread, right? Um, so we should be able to trigger, I mean, we can start that additional thread. Start. Argument zero priority. Yep. Um, I guess we don't really need that. And uh, from there, you that's where we should check if we can do the invocation of the method. So, TQ meta meta object invoke. Oh, where is my invoke method? Why is it meta method? I don't want meta method, I want method. Public static is here, invoke method, so you should really have that. Why don't you have this? So you ignoring this. Why? Because of the Q generic argument. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, 
I guess that kind of makes sense. <laughs> It'd be a bit tricky to handle um, generic argument. Um, do I have a way to deal with this? Okay, so another issue in the process, so let me just try to deal with that. All right, so we have this cute generic argument where you can have a name and data. And I guess, yeah, we need some kind of binding for that. So when we'll be adding this, uh, so let's wait, we can't do that yet. Let's get back to the bindings for Qt. So we had Q generic argument. Uh, I'm pretty sure we have that somehow already in the includes. So if we just do that, uh, we should get um, the additional binding, except that the binding would be pretty minimal because there's not much you can generate yet. So oh, yes, in theory, you should be able to call this invoke method now. You have quite a lot of additional... elements. But now, I think we need a special um, ending for... this generic uh, argument. Luna get this. Ah, uh, I was considering maybe we could do something with um pusher or lua pusher or something, but the, the problem is you're getting um a pointer here, so that's that's not good. So you really need to update the lua converter, I think. Uh, anyway, right now that should work already. I mean, that should compile. It's just that we don't really have a, a mechanism to create a Q generic argument. Because if we go there, the constructor should be pretty... Where is the constructor? This one. No, it's here. You have a string for the name, an optional string. 
maybe null and then you have some yeah void data in there and then you can create a new generate argument mm -hmm. um I'm wondering how you build a generic argument for, I don't know, a string or something? I guess you don't really have to care about the, the lifetime of your string data because you're calling this function and uh, when you return, you don't need the argument data anymore. Okay, binding was okay, so we are adding, introducing support for generic ar argument. But that's not ready yet. So, what should we do? I think the easiest option would be to go into um, the... Um, The Lua converter. We should change the Lua converter for this class. So we are adding this converter for Q. Let's do another one. That would be Q generic argument and we prepare um, Q generic argument converter all right uh, let's have a look at this one what uh, no I mean this one So the check function, <laughs> that doesn't apply anymore. Check function where uh, that's used in the Lua converter, I guess. Um, check function, where do you use that? I type check. You don't want to write hog check. I guess you don't want to do that. Not this way at least. So you would need to come here and override this function. I think there is no other location where we use this default check function, right? Yes. So it means you don't really need it here. And the thing we're doing is is last doing. So, uh, hmm, and if we have default, we have this condition, and um, we do a check if <clears throat> that's the argument. So, 
condition and okay I guess we can accept anything there so we would uh, accept for instance uh, Lua is string so if it's not a string um, or if it's not a number Well, actually, we should also accept a boolean also, and it's not a boolean. Uh, what else should we accept? Is user data? Uh, actually, I really want to. I mean, his user data or his light user data. Mm. pretty long so this would be the case where we have um, um, pointers is Neil um, is Neil then you well you could still accept this and send a void um, yeah, it's Neil. Now this is really, really long. We have a shorter way to find out. Uh, I think we have the get type right. Or Lua type, I don't know. Okay, that probably shorter. So we could instead do that. So because what should we not accept? Neil, okay, okay, okay. String is accepted. Also, table would be a bit more tricky. But in theory, we could accept that. <clears throat> Find a way to convert the table.
Thread we should remove and function we should remove. So we could do something like <clears throat> buff at subline int, and that would be um, arg. Then we provide an ID. Type and that should be Lua type of what we have at this position. And uh, what I call position is actually the index itself, right? So no, that's just 91 and that the index. So you just write that and then you write your if statement. Oh, oh yeah, we need to do that only if top is bigger than this value. Yes. So, hmm. Now that's only if you have a default value that you can do that. Come on. Um, <clears throat> so let's handle the two cases separately then. So in the case where you don't have a default value, You really need this. Mm hmm. So that's what you would do here. Oh, that's very drunk. And in the case where you have a default value, you would do something a bit different. That would be you check first. Um, Otherwise, I guess you could put that in that condition. And you will probably not need this. Mm -hmm. And you would do what kind of check would you do? You would do. Um, hmm.
Let's push in then. Okay, and you would not need to check this, but you would directly check the type. So what are the non-supported type? Table for now. Function. T function user data should be supported and uh, T thread is not. So in those cases you return false. Otherwise you may continue with checking the other arguments. So this is a case where you have a default value, but can you have a default value for Yeah you do actually have a default value. Um Okay, and in case you don't have a default value, you're just going to check, uh, take your type and do this check without the condition. Mm hmm. So basically, just that. So basically, all you need is this. And uh, you don't need that part anymore. There we go, cleaner. Um, <laughs> so I think that should do the trick for uh, the check, the checking of the types. So that's only to figure out if we can execute the function. Now, tie uh, right getter. Uh, this one we need to update and write setter. We definitely don't want to write that ever. Um, so we should probably write an error message or something. Um, Lua type name that should be just any, I guess. And you return your class. Okay. Can I output an error here? Uh, do I have an example of that? Lua L error. So back in there, you would just write an error message like cannot store uh, Q generic argument in state and we don't need to bother with that okay and next we have this getter which is which is where the actual magic will occur um def val if we have a def default value yeah, we probably want to separate the two cases again. So, so there's no such thing as a string length or anything. Not as field default value get default. Um, mm -hmm. What is the default value? Default value is definitely going to be an empty um, 
an empty queue generic argument, right? So if we go in invoke, hmm, it's interesting. That's for new instance. Connection type. Oh, generic return type. That's another one. Come on. You may need to push this one on the stack. Um, how would you do that? We'll see that later. Anyway, um, that's making a too long recording now. So let's stop and uh, we'll continue with another session then.